Madam Clerk, read House Bill 1519. House Bill 1519 by Representative Hawk to prohibit municipalities from enacting breed specific regulations for animals. Representative Hawk, you recognize explain the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Colleagues, I'm here today to speak on behalf of HB 1519. The bill is about sound public policy that helps for, to reduce the tragedy of animal attacks. Everyone wants safe communities, but breed bans have been proven time and time again to be unsuccessful. Breed bans are ineffective, costly to enforce, and have been found to be constitutionally suspect in losing in court cases over and over across this great state. Studies like the one published just three weeks ago by the American Animal Hospital Association show that breeds really have little to do with dogs' likelihood of biting, but more with the owners. National groups like the American Veterinarian Medical Society, the American Veterinarian Behavioral Society, and even the American Kennel Club have co all come out against breed bans. You know, when I was doing this bill, what struck me was that the people that actually deal with vicious animals, vicious dogs, are animal control officers. The National Animal Control Association and the Arkansas Animal Control Association have come out against breed bans. In fact, my animal control officer in Bryant and in Benton, Arkansas have publicly come out and endorsed this bill. Now yesterday in committee, uh, we had a very lively conversation. And I, I wanna thank really all the committee members because they brought up some good points. Um, one thing that got brought up was local control, right? And while you may look at the title and it says to prohibit municipalities from enacting breed specific regulations for animals, what we're not doing is we're not telling a city that they can't just ban a dog. Well, we are saying you can't ban a dog, but we're also giving them a solution. We're giving them an ordinance that is currently being used right here in the capital city, in Little Rock. It's a dangerous dog ordinance. It's been used time and time again. There's there's over 25 cities across Arkansas that are using this dangerous dog ordinance. And what it says is that if a single dog attacks somebody or cre creates a, or is misbehaving, you can ban that individual dog. You're not banning the entire breed. There are, there are people that own dogs that might be considered a bad dog that have never had an issue. So why should those people that don't have a bad dog be told they can't have that dog. They're being told by municipalities across the state that because other dogs have been bad, that their dog is no longer wanted in their city. This was a constituent issue that brought this to me. And when it was told time and time again on why should I be told I can't have a dog when my dog's never had an issue. My dog has never had an issue. Why are they telling me I can't have my dog? And so that's why we brought this to the well. There, we had 18 people in committee yesterday that signed up. I took one of those people and asked them to speak. 18, so 17 people from all over the state came to speak for this in support of this. We had one person that spoke against it. So with that, I'll ask, open it up for any questions. Seeing none, I would appreciate a good oh, I'm sorry, I apologize. Representative Bentley, for what purpose? Question. You recognize. So um, just a question for you. Do you not think it would be better for these cities to enact a good bill to get rid of bad dogs so that we don't have bad dogs that get free? Yes, ma'am. So the dangerous dog ordinance that I talked about, um, we are saying, you know, get rid of your ban on breeds altogether. We've got a 14-page document that I can send to anybody in this room that the city of Little Rock and 19 other cities across Arkansas are using right now. It's an ordinance that's holding up in court. It's an ordinance that is bas basically saying if you've got a bad actor dog, you, the city can ban your dog because of something that it did wrong. Rather than saying the entire breed is gone, we're getting rid of the entire breed, this ordinance that we're giving cities would allow for them to ban your dog for doing a bad thing. Hopefully that answers your question. Representative Kavanaugh, for what purpose? Question. You recognize. Uh, Representative Hawk, can you just clarify again what this covers and why it doesn't cover like birds or reptiles? 
Yeah, so yesterday in committee, it, um, I want to thank Representative Dalby and Representative Collins because they pointed out codes. And, and being that I'm not a lawyer, it took me a minute. So thankfully for 18 people, I was able to run over to BLR and ask about codes real quick. Um, but in the law, so it references two sections of Arkansas code. First, the first section, it deals with dogs running at large. And the other section references animals that are required by the state to be vaccinated for rabies. And there's a subsection that says dogs and cats. So this would only apply to dogs and cats in the bill. We're not talking about reptiles. We're not talking about bunny rabbits. We're not talking about chickens. We're talking about dogs and cats in this bill. Being no more questions, I would appreciate a good vote. Representative Hawk has explained the bill. Would anyone like to speak against the bill? Representative Pilkington, you're recognized to speak against the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Recently, I read a story about a mother of two that just left the hospital after being in the ICU and in stable condition. She left the hospital with stitches and bite marks all over her body after attempting to intervene when her two pit bulls mauled her toddlers to death. She was severely injured by these dogs when she tried to pull them off her five-month-old boy, Hollis Dean, and two-year-old girl, Lily Jane, just outside their home. In a matter of 10 minutes, a happy home went to one in which two small children were laying lifeless, covered in blood and bite marks, dead on the cold earth. As a father of a two-year-old myself and a six-month-old, I cannot imagine the pain and anguish that father must have felt holding the limp, pale bodies of his small children, realizing that he failed in his most basic duty as a father to protect his children, realizing he'd never see them beam with joy as they looked up at him or hear their angelic laughter as they played. Colleagues, I rise today to speak against this bill because it seeks to remove the local ban on pit bulls and other dangerous breeds in our state. And I believe this legislation is not in the best interest of our constituents, and I urge you all to vote against it. Pit bulls and other dangerous breeds are notorious for their aggressive behaviors and have been responsible for numerous attacks on humans and other animals. The risks associated with owning a pit bull are well documented, and it is our duty as legislators to protect our communities from harm. I understand that some will say that pit bulls are not inherently dangerous and that through responsible ownership, leash logs and leash laws um, and socializing their dogs properly, they can prevent this. However, we cannot ignore the fact that even well-trained pit bulls have been recorded to attack unexpectedly and cause serious injury and death. In fact, 71% of fatalities due to dog attacks in the last decade are from pit bulls. The rest are from other dangerous breeds. This past December in El Paso, Arkansas, a 10-year-old boy was hospitalized and his six-year-old brother were injured while they were preventing their little three-year-old sister from being attacked by two loose pit bulls while playing outside their grandma's home. In Faulkner County, a nine-year-old boy checking the mailbox was mauled to death by two pit bulls. In Bradford, Arkansas, four-year-old little boy Levi Watson was mauled to death by three pit bulls. And down south in Hot Springs, an older boy, 15 years old, walking home from school, was attacked by a pit bull. And even locally here in Arkansas, in Little Rock here recently, a little five-year-old girl was attacked and mauled. But this is not only kids. In my own community of Johnson County, Sharon Linderman, a 75-year-old woman, was killed by a pit bull. If this carnage, pain, and death is not reason to vote against this bill, then I would also let you realize that lifting these bans would put an unnecessary burden on our law enforcement agencies and animal control officers. Because we would have a responsibility to, to deal with an increase in pit bull related incident and other dangerous breeds. Dealing with pit bulls sometimes is so dangerous with officers that the only way they can de-escalate the situation is to euthanize the dog. Finally, I want to emphasize that our state has a responsibility to prioritize the safety and well-being of our citizens and their pets. And while 
Representative Hawk says that they can do the dangerous dog ban. Do you realize when he said this, he said the dog has to attack someone first? So we need to have a lifeless dead body of a child or an animal until we can act? I want prevention. I want to stop this. And this is not a solution so that we can help some little special interest group get a win here in Arkansas. So with that, I say vote no against this bill. Representative Pilkington has spoken against the bill. Anyone like to speak for the bill? Representative Wing, you're recognized to speak for the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. What I'd like to do is address those were indeed horrific instances. And what we need to focus on is what can we do to stop those. And the breed bans are indefensible in court. This is why the American Bar Association favors bills just like these, because what it does is it encourages our municipalities to enact vicious dog ordinances because breed bans are indefensible. It gives us a false sense of security. And so with that, we now can encourage our municipalities to do the things that will actually provide protections against instances just like that. Breed bans get very, very complicated when you start getting into court because once you get into crossbreeding, how much of this breed, how much of that breed, law enforcement also supports this type of bill as well because it takes them out of the picture. Everybody knows what a vicious dog ordinance is or what a vicious dog is. But when you start getting into um, the, the breed bans, they fall in court and then the cities are left with nothing. So I would encourage you to support this bill because this is a means forward to eliminating the vicious dogs. Representative Ray, for what purpose? You're recognized for a question. Uh, Representative Wing, this is a question that I meant to ask yesterday in committee but didn't. Both you and Representative Hawk said that these breed-specific ordinances are indefensible in court. Can you please explain that? Because my understanding from the committee testimony yesterday is that we have 38 of these sorts of bans in effect across the state. If they are, if, if they can't stand up to scrutiny in court, why do we have 38 of them across the state? Once they are challenged, they have fallen. We've had three of those breed bans across the nation have been challenged and defeated uh, just here recently within the last couple of years. I'll let uh, the bill sponsor, Representative Hawk, address uh, others as well. I know uh, we've even had one municipality here in the state that has reversed their ordinance based on the indefensibility of that. Representative Wing has spoken for the bill. Would anyone like to speak against the bill? Representative Wooten, you're recognized to speak against the bill. Well, let me share a couple of things with you. First of all, this doesn't encourage them. It prohibits it. Tells them not to do it. Okay? Second of all, city councils, Again, I'm going to repeat this. I've said this once down here, and I'm going to try to laugh and be happy because a lot of you think I'm mad when I'm down here. I'm not mad. I'm just forceful. I'm just making a point. <laughs> let, me, let me share with you. These city councils are elected by their constituents just like we are. We're getting to the point that we're dictating and telling the cities and counties what they can do. They have to be, they're closer to the people than we are. Let them make this decision. Now, let's talk about the constitutionality. It's constitutional until somebody contests it. And there's 38 of them, as Representative Ray, in the state. If I, if I backed off every time I got threatened to be sued, I'd be backing up every day. I don't worry about that. That's not our worry. They adopt them. A 10-year-old boy that was mauled by a pit bull happened the same week that a BB police officer was mauled when he went to a home that he was called to 
because the vicious dog outside, he got there and the dog jumped him and bit him. And my mayor has asked me to vote against this and I'm voting against it. And, and folks, let the local people take care of their business. We've got enough to take care of down here without us forcing other things down their throat. And I want to tell you this uh, one more time, this does not encourage them to do it. It prohibits them from doing it. So you're enacting a law that affects every municipality in this state. Thank you. Representative Wooten has spoken against the bill. Would anyone like to speak for the bill? <coughs> Representative Representative Mark Berry, you recognize speak for the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, colleagues. And his mayor is my cousin. And you can go back and tell your mayor that I'm voting for the bill. And the, the dangerous dog ordinance that's being used all over the country. And it works. Now, a lot of you aren't old enough to remember, but 30 years ago, the Doberman Pincher, that was the one of, oh, it's, you know, all this hysteria and everything with the media. It was the Doberman Pincher that was the vicious dog. Then it was the German Shepherd. Then it was the, uh, uh, I don't know, it was Pekingese or something. But the point is, the media hysteria, uh, it changes. And right now, if you go, there's just many facts, uh, you know, to support dog ordinances. Uh, as there are uh, banning dogs. I've had one person in my district contact me, ask me to vote against this bill. I've had probably a hundred emails wanting me to support the bill because they believe the same thing that Representative Hawk has set up here and told you that it's we need to get rid of dog breed bans in the state of Arkansas. And I appreciate a good vote. Thank you. Representative Pilkington. Representative, Representative Barry has spoken for the bill. Would anyone like to speak against the bill? Representative Gasway, you're recognized to speak against the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Colleagues, as you know, I don't like to speak against members' bills. Um, but in this instance, I, I feel somewhat compelled to come down here. Uh, I have some experience dealing with these cases. When I was a prosecutor, I prosecuted uh, instances where uh, there were vicious dog attacks and 201, they were pit bulls. I can recall in one specific instance where there was a young boy who the pit bull actually left its owner's yard, busted up inside a person's house and attacked the young boy inside of his own home. Uh, grasped onto his leg and they tried to beat the dog off of his leg and could not get the dog off, off this child's leg. The child almost died because it could have severed an artery. Fortunately, it didn't. Uh, and I think that dog was ultimately euthanized. In response to that and several other instances, which again, 2A1 were pit bulls, uh, the cities that I represented at the time passed uh, bans on pit bulls, and to my knowledge, they've not been challenged to this day. Um, I'll also say that, you know, with respect to the legal challenge of these uh, ordinances, I don't know how the record was developed in the lower court be and what evidence the appellate courts may have had when they looked at the appeals, but there is a lot of evidence out there that pit bulls are inherently dangerous animals. Uh, as Representative Pilkington mentioned, his the statistics he had said that 71% of uh, dog bites were attributable to pit bulls. Now the statistics I had, and I think that were presented in committee yesterday said that it was 66%. But one of the things that you have to understand, and I think this would be appropriate to develop a record if these cases were to go up on appeal, is that you know there's this idea of what's called instinctive or predatory drift. In other words, dogs are bred in a certain way, certain, certain breeds are bred in a certain way. And because of that, when they find themselves in, a, in certain situations, their instincts kick in and it makes them much more likely to chase, much more likely to bite, and much more likely to bite with the intention to kill. And that's exactly how pit bulls have been bred and that's why that they account for 
of all the dog bites, the vast majority of dog bites, but the thing that's particularly concerning about pit bulls is the pounds per square inch that their jaws have are capable of producing when they crush on a, a human being's limb, leg, neck, whatever the case may be. They have enormous power in their jaws that are capable of producing fatalities in humans. And I think that it is entirely reasonable to allow a municipality, and you know, we talk about local control around here uh, all the time. We, we talk about it when it suits our purposes typically, but if you wanna talk about local control, I think it's the essence of local control to allow municipalities to make this decision to, to ban a specific breed. Now, ultimately, you know, as with everything we pass around here, there can be legal challenges to it. I think the record needs to be developed, and I think all of the uh, research that's out there that suggests, I don't think it just suggests, I think it proves that these breeds are inherently dangerous, they're inherently aggressive, they are by their nature capable of producing fatalities, not like the Lassipu that I have. My, my, my sweet little dog couldn't kill you if he wanted to, and we love the little guy, but a pit bull can, and it makes it particularly concerning and for that reason, I think that we would be wrong to tell the municipalities that they can't do this. Let's let municipalities decide for themselves uh, in these instances. And so with that, I would ask you to vote no on this bill. Thank you. Representative Gasway has spoken against the bill. Would anyone like to speak for the bill? Representative Rye, you recognize speak for the bill. You know, it would bother me to, to see a child hurt. But I, I want to say this, you have good and you have bad of breeds. Not all dogs are the same. It's, a lot of it is how that, that dog is raised, and we all know that. Now, I have a town, and they have passed a bill to basically ban the pit bull. Now, they find out that they've actually screwed up because actually the, 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 the dogs that are left out there are German Shepherds and other kinds of mixed breed dogs that are still out there on the street, you know, that will attack you. So I think we should vote yes. I think we should vote yes because I don't think we should take one animal and one breed and take that away from the others and say, that's okay unless you can prove something happened over here. So uh, I hope that we pass this bill. Representative Ray has spoken for the bill. Would anyone like to speak against Representative Pilkin for what purpose? Motion. Let's hear your motion. Motion for immediate consideration. Proper motion, it's not debatable. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Those have it. Representative Rye has spoken for the bill. Would anyone like to speak against the bill? Would anyone like to speak for the bill? Representative Richmond, you recognize speak for the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I too have a little experience dealing with different animals, whether it's in dog shows or other types of activities. And I do believe that what General Barry said earlier, I can remember when the Doberman Pinscher was the most dangerous animal on planet Earth. I can remember when the German Shepherd, most dangerous animal on the planet Earth. And now the pit bull, it's their turn to receive every single blame for everything that happened. It reminds me of an AR-15 automatic rifle. Anytime there's a shooting, obviously it was done with an automatic rifle. And so this is what they go through. But I will tell you, my experience with pit bulls has been they're just as gentle as any other dog can be. They can be as angry and vicious as any other dog can be. And the idea that a small dog cannot do serious damage is simply flawed. A freaking chihuahua is one of the worst animals I've ever dealt with in my life in that they will literally chew your eyeball out if they don't like you. 
And so doing breed specific bands goes against everything. It's just like saying, well, you know what? The Germans are responsible for a couple of world wars. We need to be sure the freaking Germans can't come to our country anymore because look at them and all the trouble they've caused. That's ridiculous and it doesn't work. Breed specific bands will not work either. Hasn't worked, won't work. It's just one of those things that you throw out there so politicians can feel better about themselves. You've got to hold the owner responsible. Hold the individual responsible. And people have to know, and municipalities, instead of sitting on their hands until there is an attack and a problem, get their rear ends out there and do their freaking job. Because I guarantee you that you've got a dog that's attacking people, there's signs when a stranger comes by or another dog comes by or there's an encounter, that there's a potential problem. And so whose fault is it? I say it's the owner's fault. We can take the dog away from the owner. There is no perfect solution to this. But to simply say, you can't have these dogs because of something that's happened somewhere else and can't happen, that's tragic. It will always be tragic. And there's nothing we can do here that can fix that, including banning the breeds because there will always be another tragedy. If we're gonna to try to prevent things and, and save lives, then where's the legislation getting rid of freaking cars? Where's that legislation? Because there isn't anything that does more damn damage than cars. And excuse my French, but thank you. Representative Richmond has spoken for the bill. Would anyone like to speak against the bill? Representative Brown, you recognize speak against the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Colleagues, uh, like Representative Gasway, I hate to speak against some of the members' bill. But, and a lot of what I would say has already been covered by other speakers against the bill. So I'll just tell a little story. Let's touch on Representative Pilkington. On May the 28th, 2020, Robbie Taylor, which is a name that is known in Faulkner County, went to go check the mail. It was his summer vacation. He was home with his siblings and his mom. He asked, hey mom, can I go check the mail? She said, sure. So he walked down the driveway to check his mail. Well, he didn't come back. After about 15 minutes, his mother noticed he's been gone for a while. So she went and looked for him. She found his shoes in the driveway. She called 911. His 15 year old sister found his body in the field. He had been mauled to death by two pit bulls. As a street level lawyer, as they call us, do a little bit of everything. And I had the occasion to be involved tangentially on the resulting criminal case that came up. And I had to sit in court and watch the case unfold. And I had to look at the pictures of this child, this nine year old boy laying down in the field with his jugular tore out. I had to look at the pictures of him on the medical examiner's table when he had his autopsy. But the most haunting thing was I heard his wife, or I'm sorry, his, his mother wailing in the courtroom. And like Representative Pilkington is the father of two young daughters, that bothered me. Usually I'm dealing with insurance or banking or real estate. The fact of the matter is, is that statistics show that pit bulls make up only 6% of the dogs in this country. Yet in fatal dog attacks, pit bulls are responsible for north of 65%. Rottweilers make up less than 2% of the dogs in this country and they're responsible for an additional 10%. So two dog breeds are responsible for three quarters of the fatalities in this country. And the numbers just keep increasing. Folks argue that it's not the dogs, it's, not, it's, it's the owners, it's bad owners. Well, the two dogs in the Robbie's case, they had not been abused. They were, you know, taken care of pretty well. They were house dogs. They were family dogs. Family had small children. They got, a great, they got along great with the kids. But one day they got out of the fence and they snapped. And I would say that every pit bull, pit bull is a good dog until one day they're not. And kids die when they're not. We all know that bloodhounds have been selectively bred to track. It's in, their, it's in their nature, it's in their DNA. Border collies have been selectively bred to herd. It is in their nature, it is in their DNA. 
Pit bulls have been bred for one purpose and one purpose only, and that is to fight. It is in their nature, it's in their, it is in their biological makeup. I know that we've had many bills this session where local municipalities and governments have overstepped the mark in terms of regulation, and we had to come back and say, hey guys, that's not appropriate, we're gonna take that power away from you. But I think the ability of, com of communities that are affected by dogs like this to put in regulations if they choose I don't think that's overstepping the mark. I think that's being responsible to your community. There was mention about the court challenges. Well, the legal standard is, is there a rational basis for the breed ban? Is there a rational relationship between the harm you seek, that the government seeks to avoid and its police power to ensure the safety of the public health, safety, and welfare? And I believe that those withstand those challenges in other states and they'll withstand it here if, as Representative Gavinway mentioned, a proper record is made. Every court case is different. But to me, there's something fundamentally wrong where the associations that promote pit bulls even warn owners, when you take your dogs out, you must take a brake stick with you. Because if your dog does snap and latches onto a kid or latches onto a dog, you have to use this stick. To be a responsible owner, you must have this club to loosen your dog. And I would close with this. One thing else I found in my research last night as I was looking into this, and I've enjoyed the back and forth that Representative Richmond Representative Barry have about the Marines versus the Air Force. But one thing that surprised me is that one thing that the Army, the Air Force, and the Marine Corps all three agree on is we do not let pit bulls on our base housing. The Armed Forces see the problem. I think municipalities should be able to have the same rights, and therefore I'd encourage a no vote on the bill. Representative Brown has spoken against the bill. Would anyone like to speak for the bill? Would anyone like to speak against the bill? Representative Hawk, you're recognized to close for the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, you've heard it. You've heard the most descriptive, gross testimony from Representative Pilkington, Representative Gazaway, and Representative Brown. Single instances that happened. We have pit bulls, and it's all been brought back to pit bulls. You know, they said 71% or whatever are, are from pit bulls. Did you know in Maumelle, Arkansas, which by the way, the city council just got voted out because of this ban because they found it was unconstitutional. To answer your question, it was it violated the 14th and the Fourth Amendments. That's what three different courts in Arkansas determined. But the entire city council in Maumelle got voted out because of this, this ban. It's funny to me that Representative Pilkington got up here and, and gave a real solemn testimony about how, how they were going to rip limbs and throats. That sounded really familiar to his abortion testimony that he gave just last year where he talked about how when a, when a child was going to get ripped out of the womb. That sounded exactly the same. But yet he's going to do it on dogs. To Representative Brown's testimony, said that the military has banned pit bulls. That's completely false. That is completely false. In fact, I had a, a well, he's not a constituent, but a man that lives in Sherwood, Arkansas, emailed me today, just got out of the military. He had a pit bull when he was in the Air Force and he moved to North Little Rock. And because they have a ban in place, he had two options, either euthanize his dog or move to another city. He just got out of the military. So once again, that is false. Colleagues, I, I ask you, it was compelling testimony what they, what they said about individual dog attacks. We could say that just about anything that is out there. On any type of ferocious attack, you could say that there's some crazy situations that happen. But not every pit bull is bad. Not every dog is bad. They're just not. I, my neighbor owns two pit bulls right next door to me and I've got a five-year-old and a one-year-old that they play with those dogs on the daily 
never had an issue. I don't have a problem with my kids hanging out with those dogs because they're trained properly. The ordinance that is going to take place, that if this bill passes, what we give to cities is already working in Arkansas. In the capital city, they are using this ordinance. It stands up in court. It does. And so I just ask, look away from the gross descriptive testimony that was given and give citizens the right to choose. We talk about this all the time in this chamber. Give citizens the right to choose. If they screw up, then their dog is going to be taken away with this new, with this dangerous dog ordinance. That individual dog will be taken away if it screws up. And with that, I would appreciate a good vote. Representative Hawk is closed for the bill. The question before the House is the passage of House Bill 1519. Prepare the machine, Madam Clerk. Has everyone voted? Has everyone voted? Cast up the ballot, Madam Clerk. By a vote of 34 yeas, 45 nays, and 10 present, the bill has failed. Madam Clerk, please read House Bill 1571. House Bill 1571.